Good evening. My name is Drobny. Father Drobny. I'm a priest in this charming little communist country, bred four million inhabitants, three million nine hundred seventy-five thousand are atheists, and about twenty-four thousand are agnostic. The other thousand are Jewish. The point is, I don't exactly have a big following. This is the United States Embassy of this country. Six years ago, I ran in here seeking asylum from the Congress police. Outside these walls were four million communists determined to kill me. You see, my choice was simple. I could remain here in the safety of your embassy, or I could go outside and have the biggest mass conversion in history. I decided to stay, and I've been hiding upstairs ever since. The head of this embassy is Ambassador James F. McGee. He was put in charge here by your government because of his firm grasp of world events. Each morning for the past four years, he enters this room, surveys the environment, and continues to grace us with his clarity and wisdom. Jeez, look at all those communists. <laughs> this is typical of his ability to sum up the situation brilliantly. Miss Kilroy's ambassador McGee's bright-eyed, efficient assistant. I'm the only woman in the Foreign Service who knows the words, the second stand to the Star Spangled Banner. All of his vital memos are sent to Miss Kilroy. Miss Kilroy, take a vital memo to all embassy personnel. Unless a new embassy building is purchased, we must find ways to make room in this small mansion. It was unfortunate that when Dean Rusk passed through last week, we were unable to put him up for the night. It was equally unfortunate that no one here recognized him. See, this does not happen again. And this is a Master McGee's other assistant. Not exactly efficient. Not exactly bright-eyed. In fact, the only man in the history of the Foreign Service to accidentally wrap his lunch in a peace treaty. I've worked in 17 United States embassies. Some for as long as three weeks. <laughs> this young man has worked at this embassy for six months. That's the longest he's ever worked at any one embassy. Why? Well, because he's pleasant. He's eager. And he's the ambassador's son. <laughs> you sent for me, Dad? And here's where it all starts. I better get back to my room. Axel. Because of my superior record here, the leaders of my party would like to discuss the possibility of placing my name in the coming gubernatorial race in our state. Oh, Dad, I'm sure you'd make a wonderful governor. Your broad outlook would appeal to the psychotic liberals, as well as the militant fascists. Something for everyone. Naturally, in my absence, this embassy must be run with the same brilliant efficiency as the custom to when I'm here. This is a quiet little outpost. There should be no trouble. I'll level with you, Axel. I'm tempted to leave Miss Kilroy in charge, but it looks bad for the family image. Dad, the Foreign Service is my whole life. Given this chance once and for all. Welcome to wrong in two weeks. You were in Brazil for two weeks and you had them importing coffee. Dad, I, I know how much this governorship means to you. Now I'll see if this embassy remains a, a credit to your record. The only important guest we have in the next two weeks is the Sultan of Bashir. I'll see if the Sultan gets a royal treatment. You sure will, Axel. I'm on the verge of concluding an oil deal with the Sultan that will make me a very big man coming next November. Axel, most fathers start their sons in the mailroom and make them work their way to the top. I started you on top and you've worked your way to the mailroom. This embassy is a clean start for you. If it is not run letter perfect, I'll fire you. And if your own father fires you, it's the end of the line. Goodbye. Have a nice flight, Dad. Miss Kilroy? You called? Ah, yes. For the next three weeks, I am in charge of this embassy. Business will go on as usual, and it mean a great deal that for full cooperation. Your father should know better than to leave in charge a man who is asked to leave Africa. That's not fair. Some of the best men in the Foreign Service have at no one time or another been recalled from a country. Africa is a continent. You've been recalled from the entire continent. And what about Japan? You never mentioned that. Or the Soviet Union. You managed to cover that up, too. You know I've had some bad breaks career-wise. And you were hung in effigy in Panama. I admitted I was. Yes, but you didn't say it by our own embassy. <laughs> yes, yes, this is the American embassy. Oh no, Ambassador McGee's not here right now. He's on his way back to the United States. This is Axel McGee. I'm in charge during his absence. <laughs> what the hell was that? It's the communist police. They're chasing three people. They put George Mr. McGee. They're right the steps of the embassy. We better open up the front doors quickly. Help! We're American tourists. The communists are after us and they were spies. We're Americans, I swear. The, the Willie Mace, Hershey Boss, Johnny Cash. <laughs> I pledge my allegiance to the flag. I vote Republican, but we can stand. It's the communist police. Some 
vacation run! <laughs> Where are they? Hand them over to us! Who? What? What did they do? They were caught in the act of spying! How? They were taking pictures in a restricted area! That doesn't make them spies! Did you see the shirt that cow was wearing? What were they taking pictures of? Missile sites and rocket installations. They've seen too much. They must die. Mr. McGee! They're setting up searchlights and machine guns around the embassy! I'm sure they didn't realize. Look, I'll give you the film. In fact, I'll give you the whole camera. Hand them over to us, or we will drag them out and shoot them. This is an American embassy. No one is to be dragged out of here and shot without the written consent of the American government. Leave these premises at once. Your behavior is an extreme violation of international conduct. Who are you? I'm Axel McGee. I'm in charge during my father's absence. Guns or no guns, if you don't go, Miss Kilroy will throw you out. <laughs> <laughs> Something is happening. Yes, Tommy, I know. There are soldiers in Running's house. They are standing to the kitchen. Don't worry. They won't hurt you. I can't cook if I'm being steered at. I'm that kind of person. Who are you? I'm um, personal chef to Ambassador McGee. Permanent chef at the King of Norway. Permanent chef at the White House. Permanent chef to the Queen of England. Before that, I did very little cooking. Don't you terrorize our help. I have a cake in the oven. You guys are made of fool. Mr. McGee, stand firm. I'll lodge a formal complaint. Uh, you stand firm. Oh, Lodge. Look, uh, you spy on us, we spy on you. Everybody knows it. Why don't we be honest for once? You do spy on us? How often? Oh, all the time. It's no secret. Espionage goes on between our countries every day. Does, huh? Then, are they spies? Well, no. Maybe. I don't know. How do you not know? You've never seen them before? So you're telling me your country doesn't send spies to the United States posing as tourists? So you admit they're spies? Uh, what if they are? That doesn't give you the right to enter this building illegally. You're going to start an international incident. This is not just a vicious and cruel attack on an American embassy, but the whole free world. I wouldn't be surprised if France took our side. Mr. Crowjack, I have your foreign affairs office on the phone. They'll want to report back immediately. He admitted they were spies! <laughs> you didn't, Mr. McGee? Well, he admitted it, and have it right here, on tape. I did, in a sense. You know, Miss Gilroy, we spy, they spy. We do nothing of the sort. Actually, we do, and if you all stop lying. That's enough, Mr. McGee. We do spy. Will you speak louder, please? No. Don't you twist my words. You're barging in here with guns, and you wonder why brutalization gets a bad name. This embassy will be tracked from this day forward. The spies will either come out or spend the rest of their lives in here. But first, the world will hear this message. Goodbye for now. How could you do it? How could you admit they were spies? I panicked. I lost control. What were you thinking? I was thinking, don't panic. Don't lose control. You! <laughs> yeah, you were the best. How could you tell him was spies? You have to be careful. He's always eavesdropping. Why'd you tell him was spies? They say we're spies, and he tells them yes. Next thing I know, I'm a spy. I'll go on what's my life. They'll never guess. Where's my daughter? I'll get her. Miss Burns? Bring the girl up from the basement. Yes, Miss Burns, please bring the girl up from the basement. Who are you, Horeco? Want to be quiet. Those lunatics out there accuse us of spying, and this lunatic here says yes. If you're listening, you should know that I was trying to calm them down. First no movie on the plane, then this. It's a simple misunderstanding. <laughs> How simple? Simple enough. If we leave the building, they kill us? No, don't jump to conclusions. There'd be a trial first. Who is this guy? I've got a father. Maybe I can talk to the airport. Uh, there's no need for that. I can handle a crisis. Handle one? You are one. <laughs> this man takes his family on vacation. He wants to show them a good time. And this is what we have working in our government. And then they wonder why I don't vote. <laughs> I have to make out a report. Well, that's what you get for taking pictures. It's my vacation. My new hobby is photography. Am I interested in their missiles and rockets? All I want to do is take some pictures. I wonder if any of your photos are valuable. He held the camera backwards and pictures of his nose. <laughs> I've got to have my head examined. Every time I listen to you, I wind up on the eight ball. Uh, here we go again. If you had listened to me, we would have taken a cabana at Atlantic Beach. Every year, it's got to be Atlantic Beach. What's the matter? They need you to work the time. Nope, we had to go to Europe. $3,500 for three weeks of uninterrupted diarrhea. What's so terrible? My brother suggested we see Europe. He had a wonderful time. I am tired of living for your brother. I have to run my life by your brother. That's a hard one. 
I realize you're upset. I'd like to just get some facts. Mr. and Mrs. Walter Holland in Newark, New Jersey. You want to know the facts? The facts are, I have a three-week vacation. I say, let's go to Atlantic Beach. We can swim, play pinnacle. There's miniature golf. <laughs> nope. Her brother says go to Europe. And behind the Iron Curtain, no less. I needed this like a growth. Aren't you interested in how the other half lives? We went with you to see the Follies, Berger, and Paris. Are you really comparing communes to those girls? As if he'd appreciate Europe any place. We took him to Westminster Abbey, his feet hurt. We took him to St. Peter's in Rome, he got dizzy from looking up. We took him to the Louvre, I hate to tell you what happened. It's pronounced Louvre. <laughs> Louvre, that's how much you know. In the Louvre, he struck a match across a Van Gogh. I thought I'd die. <laughs> Have either of you two ever had any, um, Respiratory ailments? <laughs> Sorry, wrong form. I have a brother, see? He's a wonderful man. He's a Nazi! You don't know what you're talking about! Oh, trust me, he should be wearing an armband. Ah, uh, here we are, seeking asylum. I'm not seeking asylum! I didn't do anything, I'm just a Cairo from New Jersey. I'll need your passports, and I have to get some information. I'm giving you information. It began with my brother, quite a lovely individual. They should have hung him in Nuremberg. <laughs> have either of you two ever bought anything on credit? <laughs> my brother went to Europe last year. He had a wonderful time. He suggested we bring my daughter. It's cultural. My brother's an intellectual. Some intellectual, like Sonny Liston. And you're just a caterer. No one paid you to take pictures of anything or anything like that. Hollander and Blackwell, finest in New York. There's my car. Uh, do you work, Mrs. Hollander? No, sir, I'm your average housewife. Some average housewife? She's a professional mahjong hustler. <laughs> Carries around her own titles, too. And you accidentally wandered in a restricted area. I mean, you didn't sneak in or anything like that. I told him it looked like private property, but he had to get a picture. He said what? Because of the guards and dogs and barbed wire? I said yes, because of the guards and dogs and barbed wire. What did you think it was? A place that sold guards and dogs and barbed wire? Then they chased you, and you had the good sense to come here. My daughter had the presence of mind. She did the right thing, Mrs. Hollander. Sure, so you could tell them we're spies. My wife should not have to go through this. She's not a young woman. <laughs> On the one hand, we want to protect you. On the other hand, we want to protect the best interests of the United States government. I always thought they went hand in hand. I'm an old woman? <laughs> I didn't mean old. I, I just meant a young old. There's nothing to worry about. <laughs> sure, because I'm a caterer, not a spy. Creative catering's our specialty. We are the first to make bridegrooms out of potato salad. He does love the work, I'll say that for him. Yeah, last month we did a wedding reception. We had the bride's body in jello, the head in a very nice clam dip, with fruit punch spouting out of a throat. <laughs> it was a class affair. I should have this settled in a few days. What? A few days? What do you expect me to do, Olivia? They require some effort, Mr. Hollander. But we're going to show those communists their police state tactics won't work on us. I'll call Miss Kilroy and see if she can bring up some cots in the basement. Cots? I will not sleep on a cot. I am a dignified human being with a hernia. It's an emergency, Mr. Hollander, and we'll try our best. I got a business, you see. Sam Blackwell can't run the firm all by himself. He's the inside man. I'm the outside man. It requires personality. Mr. Hollander, was there some kind of notebook in your suitcase back at the hotel? With some sort of party list in it? No. Oh yes, the Levine wedding yesterday. What is that? The Levine wedding. How many from the groom's side? How many from the bride's side? How much roast beef? How much grapefruit? The communist police say they've been working on it and they've broken the code. What code? Supply information and troop movements. Troop movements? That's the Levines of Wassermans. There's more Levines because she's paying for the wedding. They do eat like an army, but they're civilians. It's that damn Crowjack trying to frame you. You're right. I can't be here. It's the height of the season. I got weddings coming up. I got receptions. I got coming out parties. Sam Blackwell can't hail all by himself. He lacks my charm. So he'll have a son come in and help out. He's over 21. His son? Who's going to address him? Mr. Hollander, your business can manage for a few days. You may think so. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to America. Where's my hat? Where's my daughter? I'm right here. I've been hiding down in the basement. Mr. McKee, this is my daughter Susan. She was a cesarean. <laughs> I 
How do you do, Mr. McGee? Axel McGee. Are we free to go home yet? Home? Sure, we're free to go home. You see what's stored out there? Thanks to this guy here, we're liable to be stuck here three or even four days. I realize it's terrible. I think it's fun. Some might see this as an exciting experience. Some people bought four edzels. We could be worse off. This place is lovely. What about Seth? Seth, oh my goodness! Forgive her. In a panic, she completely forgot she gave birth twice. I wasn't even worried about Seth. He's been at camp. Camp ends tomorrow. If we're not there to bring him home, he'll be unsupervised. He'll live in the streets. He'll run amok. He'll rape and loot. You know our son. He takes after your brother. <laughs> That's right! I got the pause on the hall! I'm getting married, huh? I guess you're pretty eager to get out of here. That's a long story, Mr. McGee. Hey, let's not discuss it. The date's been set. Well, we may need to push back the date, so you better call the Renaissance Luau and get our deposit back. All right, and you better call Donald. He'll be worried sick. I'll call. Mr. McGee, what's the longest anyone has ever had to stay here for? Oh, we've been granting asylum to a priest who's been staying upstairs a while. What's a while? Oh, you know, a while. How long? Six years. SIX YEARS?! <laughs> I said, let's go to Atlantic Beach! We could have swam, we could have played pinnacle. Nope, your brother said go to Europe! May he rest in peace! He's not dead! He should be! <laughs> Listen, I've been on the phone all day with Washington, with their embassy, with the UN. The whole picture's being clear to me now. What whole picture? Oh, it's all over the American press. This morning, the FBI captured this country's top secret agent, Adolf Lofer, the Great Fox. The Great Fox? They caught him posing as a student in Berkeley. Apparently, the Reds went after the first American tourist they could find, in retaliation, of course. Now I suppose they want to trade spies. Adolf Lofer for the Hollanders. Washington won't hear of it. They're outraged. I wonder if that's the way it's going to be from now on. Every time we arrest one of their spies, they arrest one of our neighbors. Oh, I better go help the chef. Mr. Hollander's driving her crazy. He hates European food. <laughs> Mr. McGee, are you aware that the Sullivan of Bash year is due here Friday? I suggest we postpone it for a more auspicious moment. Nonsense. I should have this cleared up by Friday. And if you don't? If I don't, business will go on as usual. I'm running this embassy after all. Oh, Mr. McGee, <clears throat> may I please speak with him? Certainly. Miss Kilroy, please. Mr. McGee, I hope you're not upset by my parents. Upset? They're really sweet people. They just have their own way of expressing themselves. Don't let their form of communication throw you. You don't have to explain parents to me. I have two parents. Uh, I had two parents. My mother's in court trying to disown me. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Kilroy, explain to us that your father's Ambassador McGee. Did she also explain to you that if I don't make it here, I'm finished? Oh, it's not that bad. Everybody makes mistakes. Every time I pick up the papers, I read about another diplomatic crisis cropping up somewhere in the world. Susan, tell me, have you noticed that my name is in every article? <laughs> Funny, you're just the opposite of Donald. Who's Donald? He's my fiancé. He's so confident and totally in command. Oh, I'm confident too. Between major international blunders, that is. <laughs> well, I don't know about anybody else, but I'm beginning to like it here. Gee, Susan, it's awfully sweet of you to take that approach. I really appreciate it. I mean it. It's very exciting. And romantic. Most people spend their whole lives without anything like this happening to them. So your father keeps telling me. Danger <laughs> stimulates me. Do you know how many babies were born in England in World War II as a result of the Blitz? <laughs> well, if it's danger you want, take a look out there. There must be two dozen professional killers. <laughs> It's hard to see much. Here, I'll knock off that light. You'll be able to see all the guards and the secret police. Oh, sure. Look at them out there. They've got machine guns. Are you married, Mr. McGee? <laughs> <laughs> One thing about my work. It doesn't allow me to meet many attractive American women. Oh, don't you have a girlfriend or someone back home? My work has caused me to travel a lot. Suddenly. What do you do? Are you a model or an actress or something? No, I danced in a New York City Center ballet, and I was a folk singer, and I worked in a coffee house in Greenwich Village. Waitress? I repair motorcycles. Right now, my big interest is painting. <gasps> painting, really? I love painting. It's all very abstract, though. I think you hate it. 
First, I take oil and splash it all over everything, and then I run over with my sneakers, and then I put my lunch in it. In fact, my lunch came in second as shown in Cape Cod. I adore abstract art. Really? I'm a big Jackson Pollock man. I find his drippings best express my uh, mental state. <laughs> you know, if you're interested, after dinner, I can show you a sculpture made of a bedpan and small automobile parts. I love it. <laughs> you know, you're really very pretty. Thank you. Forgive my intrusion, Mr. McGee, but I must know about the decision for dinner. Uh, what's the problem? It's him. Who? Mr. Ollander. Be nice to him. I'll see you at dinner. And feed the chain him. Is it no? Does he have any suggestions? Mr. McGee, we're four thousand miles from the United States. This is a times country. It's eight o'clock at night. Where do you expect moi to get Saturday coffee cake? What kind of place is this? Oysters. Oysters? Listen, I will not eat oysters. They're alive when you eat them. I want my food dead. Not sick, not wounded, dead. It's too late to get anything new. Take a very nice PS Veal. You must be joking. What's wrong with Veal? My recipe is one of the great secrets of European cooking. Really? Let's keep it that way. <laughs> Monsieur Maggie, I have very little. If I just had known, I could not get to the market. There were soldiers outside. Mr. Hollander, try and understand. This is an American embassy, and we entertain guests from all over the world. So our menu here is particularly elaborate. Look, all I want is a plain piece of boiled chicken. Walter, well, where did you go off to? You know me, I can't get a meal here. I'll make you something. Good. Madame, how do you live with this man? Do you force feed him? Don't worry, I know he likes. I warn you, madame, no one has ever been in my kitchen before. If you do anything to spoil the order of my spice rack, I don't know if I will do. Do you hear me? I don't know if I will do. It's good to know our food's being cooked by an outpatient. <laughs> <laughs> Father Drobny, what brings you down here? Well, I, I heard so much commotion today, and, and I met the same lady in the hall upstairs. These are the Hollanders. They came here today in much the same way you did six years ago. Ah. <laughs> are you refugees? Refugees! <laughs> Do you know what I paid for this shirt? We were at the Vatican, we saw you, boss. <laughs> <laughs> if it's for me, I'm free to talk. Yes? Yes, of course. Excuse me for a moment, I'll take this inside. He's in a little tiny room on the top floor, and he practically never leaves it. Don't you go crazy. Why, why I'm a guest of the courtesy of your government, and I wouldn't want to make myself a nuisance. Can't you ever leave here? Only if there is some drastic change in national policy. I have many friends who can help me to escape, but my duty is to one day leave here and leave my people once again. But until you leave your people, you stay in your bedroom. In recent years, I've developed a bit of a hobby, and so passes the lonely moments. What do you do? Father Trobney's a magician. I've been practicing for years. Years. That's a wonderful hobby. Pick a card. Go ahead. Any card. I'm not forcing. That's all I needed. Come on, Dad. Be a sport. Go on. Take any card. Go on, Walter. Don't be rude. Ace of spades. Wrong door, spades. I did it. <laughs> <laughs> Father Trappy has all kinds of interesting things up there, don't you, Father? Birds. I have pretty birds. I raised them. I could transform them before your eyes. Why don't you get some of your things? I'd love to see them. Really? Would you? Of course he would. Wouldn't you, Walter? Of course. Why do you think I had a strap here? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be down in a minute. An audience. An audience. I'll do the rings and my silk handkerchief production. And my bench and your rolls. I'll be down in a minute. Terrific, it's the Ed Sullivan show. Don't go away. Don't go away. Imagine staying in your room and practicing magic for six years. What about us? What if the same thing happens to us? Where do you compare? We're innocent tourists. He's a priest. He could probably get out of here to some effort, but you know how it is with those fellows? The one who suffers the most gets a promotion. Mr. Hollander, I think we solved your dinner problem. The chef is making you hair. What? Hair. What's hair? Rabbits. Pardon me? Hair is rabbit. It's the closest thing to chicken the chef could find. Rabbit? It's delicious. Like bunny rabbit. If you don't ask, you'll eat chicken from your friend. You're talking rabbit. It's like Peter Rabbit? If I told you it was chicken, you wouldn't know the difference. Listen, I will not eat my furry friends. It's like eating squirrels. Can't draw it out. There must be a Chinese restaurant somewhere. I'm back. He's back. 
I can only carry the small things, but it's not the first few hours of the show. How many hours is the show? Here. Hold this. I want to go home. <laughs> I have dreamed of this moment for years. What miracle shall I start with? I don't know. Can you walk on water? My son is 12 years old. I will not see him until he's 18. <laughs> As you can observe, I have nothing up my ropes. Isn't it wonderful, Walter, the tricky priest? I have nothing in my cloth. I have two birds in my cage. Now observe very closely. I place the empty cloth on the cage. Say the magic words. Abracadoodly. Abracadiddly. Abracadoozles and abracafiddly. Skip, skip. Bop, bop, bam! <coughs> Where's my rabbit? <laughs> I had a rabbit in there. <laughs> Where's my rabbit? How do you like it? Rare, oh, medium, oh. well done. There's my rabbit. I don't want a rabbit. Where's my rabbit? Where's my rabbit? Where's my rabbit? Where's my rabbit? Mr. Krojak, your charges of espionage are ridiculous. They're American tourists. We will not hand them over to you. No. No. You will not wait them out. They've been here five days, and they're prepared to stay five years if necessary. Don't threaten me, and don't threaten them. I know you're only doing this because we captured Adolf Loper, your illustrious great fox. I... Hello? God damn. Boy, there, stinkers. Please remove that ironing board. Where can I go? Every time I step in the kitchen, the chef starts to cry. If everyone would please go to their rooms. How long can a person keep locked up in a cloakroom? <clears throat> Listen, I'm worried about Walter. Ferdy wrote, first he wrote his congressman, he got back a mimeographed form letter. Then he wrote his senator, and he got back a mimeographed form letter. Then he wrote our son, and then he got back a mimeographed form letter. <laughs> I am okay, I am eating, I'm getting plenty of rest. I'll consider any suggestions you have to make your loving son, Seth. That's because he worries about that boy too much. There's no need for your husband to send your son food from Europe. Please remove this ironing board. Hello, Walter. You see that? I said, hello, Walter. You see the look he gave me? Hello, grouch. He should be here any minute. Who should? The Sultan of Bashir. Or did you forget? The Sultan? Wasn't that called off? I suggested a postponement, but you assured everyone that you would have matters settled and that business would proceed as usual. Oh, hell. Let me think. You know the Sultan is a dictator and a very temperamental man. Any little ripple could hurt your father's oil deal, and I'd hate to be in your shoes if that happened. Maybe I can still call him and delay it. I got a telegram this morning. Sam Blackwell caters a sweet 16 party. I'm not interested. He gets a special price on the mates. I'm not listening. He doesn't use our regular guy, you hear? Tries to buy cheap. I don't want to hear it. Four guests go home that night. What happens? They get food poisoning. What? Yeah, they're in the hospital because he looked for bargains. I bet they're suing. Yeah, now you want to hear. Are they? Eh, I don't want to tell you. You're not interested. Oh, tell me! No, listen, you're not interested. Why should I tell you? Tell me! A foggy day in London? Well, do you know what you are? You're a sadist! Why? A minute ago, you weren't even interested. I'm not interested. You're not? Good. It's a foggy day. Don't you, you gonna answer me? Are they suing? Is that what you asked? No, they're not suing. We're suing them for low resistance to tainted meat. Walter! <laughs> of course they're suing. What do you expect from poisoned people? <laughs> If I could get Sam Blackwell here, I'd crush his head. Be thankful nobody died. Yes, Mary. We're thinking of making that the slogan. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Could, could somebody help me out of this? Not now with the magic tricks around me. I honestly don't know how Houdini used to get out of this. Hey, no, my Tim Father. I think it's wonderful a man of the cloth has a hobby besides just God. A man builds a catering firm for over 20 years, goes on vacation, leaves his partner in charge. And he begins poisoning customers. I'm working with the crazy of Borgia. Faith in the Lord, my son. <laughs> I have faith in the Lord, Father. And 
if he can hear me now, please crush Sam Blackwell's head. Hello? Yes? What? Hold on. New Jersey for you. Must be Blackwell. Be nice. Everyone makes mistakes. Yep. <clears throat> yes, this is he. Uh-huh. Yeah, go ahead. Well, hello, Crutton. You poison any more people, Crutton? Oh, that is just wonderful. Keep up the good work. Two more keeled over. They're dropping like flies. <coughs> I can't hear you. Blackwell, hey, talk louder. Well, what the lawyer said? The lawyer thinks they have a case, eh? Oh. You know, Blackwell, when I get back to America, I'm gonna rent a car and run you over. You understand? I'm gonna run you over. Blackwell? Murderer? Hey, I can't hear you! Overseas operator, I have a problem. I, I can't hear the murderer. What? Blackwell, you fist as a caterer. You mixed your ass fruit cocktail. Mr. McGee, his fantasy has arrived. Mr. McGee? Mr. McGee! <laughs> what do we have here? The Lawrence of Arabia? How do you do, Sultan? Sultan? You know him. Are you ignorant? It's a Sultan of Bashir. What do you do? Go around the UN building picking up Arabs? I am His Royal Majesty, ruler of the people of Bashir. How I come you... to see Ambassador McGee. How do you do? This is my wife. Hello, can I take your veil? Hi. I'm Walter Hollander. Okay. Dromney, you're gonna have a heart attack. You're not a young man. Excuse me, Your Majesty. I'm a guest of Ambassador McGee's. I hope you didn't have too much trouble getting past those soldiers outside. Walt and I are wanted. You know, I think I know I read about the Sultan of Bashir recently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, didn't you fellas put down an uprising? Hmm? Yeah, you guys had some sort of revolution or something. Where's the ambassador? Yeah, you killed all those workers. That wasn't very nice what you did to those people. They were protesting peacefully. There are two sides to that story, my friend. What kind of two sides? A few poor workers go out striking. Hey, you gotta kill them, right? If you could see them, they were vermin. There was no other way of teaching them. Uh, Walter, what are you doing talking about something you don't know anything about? I don't know. Politics? What's the matter with you? Don't you read the papers? This guy kills his people like you use a MasterCard. Walter, you're in a very bad mood. I did not come here to be seen by a pair of dogs. Where's the ambassador? I always read things in the papers and get frustrated because being a little shot from New Jersey, I never get to express my opinion to a real big shot. No one asked you! Your Majesty, please forgive me. I will not stay here unless I receive an apology from your government. Mr. Holder, leave this room at once. What's your trouble, Aladdin? Walt, you're in a very bad mood this morning. Let's go! I'm not going anywhere. I live here and I pay my taxes. Why, does this bum have some oil wells? Majesty, please come and You are an insolent swine! You know what? I think I'll hit him a shot in the chops. Yeah, they'll have to bandage you up in your own cheeks. Don't threaten me, you pig! Who is this guy anyway? That's none of your business! This is my business! This building was rented with my money, because I pay my taxes! Walter, butt out! I don't like the idea of my government doing business with this guy. Mr. Hollander, that's something for the government to decide! I am the government! Oh, listen to him! He's the government! What do you think the government is? It's little people like you and me. Well, maybe not you, but... <laughs> I've never been insulted in such a manner. Your Majesty, please. Oh, take a walk, Fatso. That's how this country gets into so much trouble dealing with guys like him. In your opinion? Yeah, read Walter Levman. I'm not coming to be humiliated. Relations between us are at an end. Your Majesty, please. And every time you bring somebody in this embassy who's a bum like him, they get the same. Come on, Marion. For a man who cheats on his income tax, you sure are a big shot. <laughs> Dad, it wasn't my fault. Mr. Hollander insulted him. But Dad, you said it looked bad for the family image if it put Miss Kilmer in charge. But Dad, yes, Dad. Oh yes, sir. Goodbye. Ah! I'll start right away to see if we can arrange a spy trade. Hard luck, McGee, but those are the breaks. Hi, Axel. I brought you a drink. I thought you might need one. Why? Why does this always happen? What do I do? I'll kill myself, that's it! I'm gonna kill myself! Axel, what happened? I'm a failure. And not just a little failure. I'm a big failure. Like, the world's fair. Have a drink. Miss Kilroy has believed me in my command. And the United States Weather Bureau has declared me a disaster area. 
Your job really means a lot to you, doesn't it? I guess it's hard to understand. It's all I've been brought up to think of. I understand. It's not easy to be the son of a famous person. Susan, do you know that when I was ten years old and I did something wrong, my mother used to hit me with a copy of the Times Magazine with my father's picture on the cover? <sighs> oh, Axel, I don't find you a failure. Maybe you're just in the wrong field. Maybe in some other business you'd be a genius. Oh, yeah, sure. Sure, if there was a, a failure business, I'd have chain stores. <laughs> what does your fiancé do? He's a lawyer. Look, I know it's not my place, but you don't seem awfully enthused over the prospect of getting married. I am not getting married. I haven't told my parents yet, but I have told Donald. He's bright and very handsome, but not for me. Oh, I guess your father will be upset. Oh, he's going to have a stroke. My father adores Donald, and compared to the kind of boys I almost married, Donald's the answer to a father's prayer. Have you almost married often? A few times, and always the type that would turn my father's hair gray. A manic depressive jazz musician, draft dodger, and a defrocked priest. Boy, you must really hate the suburbs. <laughs> if I tie myself down for life, I want someone... A stable and successful. No, I want a little action. That's what I mean. You don't want anything too stable and successful. <laughs> the truth is, you don't know what you want. You think you want a certain type, and then you meet someone who has nothing at all of what you want. And for some unexplainable reason, you fall in love with him. I know. I once wrote a poem about that. Poem? Axel, you're a late creator. Is the place all lovely surrounded? Oh, yes. You want to see? Look at all those stars. You can see the dipper. See? <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, the air is so clear this time of year. I love fall. It's such an exciting time of year. It's the start of everything. Oh, I love winter. Because I love to ski. I've never gone skiing, but I'm mad for the idea. Oh, maybe someday when this all gets worked out, I could take you skiing. It's very romantic. I know you love it. But one time, I broke my pelvis. <laughs> well, it's getting late. I better go to bed. Good night, Axel. It was fun talking to you. Uh, thanks for the drink. What? Oh, I'm so sorry. Are you I, okay? I better go now. Oh, please forgive me. I, I... Excuse me. Sorry. Good night. Good night. Damn it! Why can't I get anything right? Yo! <laughs> Son, we'll be home tonight. Oh, it's a terrific thing. We're being traded for a communist spot. Yeah, you'll read about it in the papers, I'm sure. Is there anything you want us to give you? Anything from here? He wants us to take some pictures. <laughs> hey, hey, Quentin. Listen, don't forget to thank the clients for taking care of you. Yeah, be good. We'll see you soon. I called Donald last night. You called Donald? Don't you think that's Susan's business? Yeah, I feel she neglects him. And besides, I want to create good relations with our future son-in-law. What'd he say? It wasn't home. My future son-in-law is suing a slum landlord. The boy is a poet. All packed? Clever of Mrs. Kilroy to arrange the spy exchange, Axel. Oh, yes, yeah, she's very good at these things. She's already lined up a big reception for the Sultan of Bashir, and I'm sure she'll have that situation smoothed over just as quickly as she did this one. I guess I'm just having a knack. I'd still rather be you. I'm gonna miss you, Susan. If you're ever in Newark. At the rate I'm going, it could happen. <laughs> <laughs> Axel, I'm sorry about the other night. You're sorry? I'm sorry I got so shaken up. It was something I wanted you to do, and when you did it, I got cold feet. I just wish we could have spent more time together. So do I. Well, at least you'll still have her job. Yeah. I can't understand you. They've been so nice to us. How could you put the towels in your suitcase? It's a habit. I was a deprived child. <laughs> you sure it's safe to go out there? Oh, yes. It's all been carefully worked out. Mr. Krojak will accompany you to the plane. We came to say goodbye. And to wish you good luck. Lee, it's a pity you're leaving. You know, Chef, if you ever need a job in America, I can probably get you in a truck full of nuts. I may as well tell you, Mr. Ollander, the beer you had last night was ill, and you clean it, you plate. Look in the vase next to the dining room table. <laughs> Bless you all. You have truly made my life richer. <clears throat> Five diamonds. You're right, five of diamonds. Oh, man. They're all five of diamonds! <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Krojak has arrived. So 
we finally meet, face to face. We don't hold the grudge. Sir, you can't with the H-bomb. Let bygones be bygones. Criminals against the state. And take it easy, mister, you'll live longer. Only for Adolf Lopert, the great fox, would our government do this. Mr. McGee, will you check and make sure that the Hollanders haven't left anything? Oh, yes, I think there's still a few crates upstairs. I better check and make sure Walter brought his passport. Wouldn't it be a scream if he had to spend the rest of his life on Ellis Island? Hey, Stuart. There's a phone call for you. It's urgent. It's Ambassador M Mickey's private line. If I could have my way, you and all those like you would hang as an example to all enemies of the state. Crowjack, when was the last time you went on a date? I've had many men who've worked with the Gestapo over the years. One hour at their disposal? And you would tell everything. Tell what? What's to tell? Admit it. You're a filthy American spy. Ho oh, what? Admit it. Ho? Oh? Admit it. What? Admit it. All right, all right. I admit it. If it makes you happy, I admit it. I'm not a caterer. I'm not from New Jersey. She's not my wife. She's a U-boat commander. <laughs> <laughs> you happy? You're supposed to be so clever. You're nothing. This has been my easiest capper since the Kowalski wedding. <clears throat> Kill you myself. My hands were dug by stupid red tape, and I have my men come in here and try you out. It riles you, doesn't it? You like to bully people, don't you? Well, wait till I get back home and tell the papers that we make monkeys out of you. You will be the laughing stock of the secret police. I'd be surprised if they let you keep your little disguise kits. You will die. I will see to it. If I must do it with my own bare hands. Hey, don't make a move, or I'll blow you to pieces. <laughs> You're a bluffing. Oh, yeah, big shot. Ha! You fool! That's a finger! Oh, it may look like a finger. But actually, it's a flesh colored 45 with two joints, a knuckle, and a little bit of hair. In it! Boss, I'm ready to go! Uh, me too, you got everything? I finally convinced the authorities to let me use my own methods of dealing with you. This deal has cheated me of that chance and has saved your lives. Someday, we will meet again. The deal is off. What? what? I have just received word from our intelligence. Adolf Lopert is dead. Dead? He has hung himself in his cell. Adolf Lopert? Dead? He's dead? Like the not alive dead. <laughs> oh boy, am I in trouble. The great fox dies by his own hands. I must report back to my office immediately. So we shall meet again. I'd sleep with one eye open if I were you. What are we gonna do? We're not going home? I guess not. Oh, he had to pick the day to kill himself. He couldn't wait till the weekend. And it was a holiday weekend. See, and you wanted to rush back to work? I better call Barney Silverman. Oh, I'm getting drowsy. Drowsy? Yeah, I already took my drowning. It's a half hour before takeoff. <laughs> he caught him seven days ago. And he had to pick the day. And this morning yet. 5 a.m. there. He did it before breakfast. See how important it is to eat? I better unpack. Yeah, I'll go call Seth and tell him to go ahead with his application to the foster parents' home. What makes a man himself? What do you expect from a great fox? Does that sound like the name of a grown up person? Well, you wanted us to spend more time together. You know, McGee, I got some ideas of how we can make the food up. <laughs> Marion! Come quickly! She's kissing the failure! <laughs> While you were out smoking, the Hollanders have been living here nearly two weeks now, and everyone is really feeling the strain. Mrs. Hollander has nothing to do, and so she goes around all day cleaning the embassy. I have waxed every floor in the whole house twice, even the rooms with wall-to-wall -wall carpeting. <laughs> it's nice to be clean, but a lot of floor wax is a dangerous thing. <laughs> Curse that living room floor! <laughs> Meanwhile, Susan McGee has been feeling a different kind of strain. I wish there was some place where you could go and be alone. Your father watches us like a hawk. Last night, when he thought we were going to meet in the dining room, he squatted motionless, put a throw pillow on his lap, and pretended to be a chair. <laughs> I sat on him. <laughs> if Mr. Hollander's behavior seems a little extreme, it's only because he is a man torn between a failing business, a failing future son-in-law, 
and a 12-year-old boy he misses very much. Dear Seth, don't forget to dress warmly. Eat your food carefully and chew your food slowly. And stay away from women. <laughs> Look what happened to me. <laughs> After going over all the pros and cons very carefully, I had a long talk with Mrs. Hollander and Susan about the only way they could ever see their home again. Escape. Did Father Johnny speak to you of an escape? Yes, I think it's a wonderful idea. Did you suggest it to Mr. McGee? Not yet. I want to wait till the moment's right. Did you suggest it to Daddy? Uh, I wouldn't dare. You know he hates to take me any place. <laughs> oh, hello, McGee. Hello, Father. Uh, I don't want to alarm anyone, but I don't like what's going on out there. This morning, there was just a few pickets, but the numbers were growing, and now there's dozens. And a lot of them look too old to be students to me. Uh, yes, I see. Some are not students. Some are communist agitators. And just how ominous are those anti hollander signs they're carrying? <laughs> Say, McGee, is there a safe place to hide the Hollanders' event of any sort of serious rioting? Serious rioting? What do you have in mind? Well, stoning, looting, maybe fires. Stoning, looting, fires. My life is like the Old Testament. The only thing I've been able to avoid so far is locusts. <laughs> the Hollanders are enemies of the state. Kozak has many followers who will stop at nothing. Should they choose to, they will find a way to come in here and get the Hollanders out. See, Kelly doesn't understand the severity of these things. She lacks my past experience getting stoned and spit at. I better call my father direct and let him know there may be trouble. Hey, I want to speak to you! All of a sudden, it's goodbye, successful lawyer. Hello, psychotic diplomat. It's her own life, Walter. She's 23. Who says it's not her own life? I just want to do the right thing, that's all. So? So what I tell her to do is the right thing. <laughs> this guy is what we used to call in the poor of a loser. He's a Yale graduate. Yale makes mistakes, too. Walter, don't get involved. This is the worst prospect she's ever had. I even like the draft dodger guy she was going for. He was at least a success. May I remind you that when I married you, your future didn't look too secure. Yeah, where do you compare? I have the joie de vivre. Well, go to security if she isn't happy. Who said anything about happiness? We're talking about marriage. <laughs> when you get married, you give up happiness. <laughs> oh, so a dog can't make you happy? He's an attorney. If the little court cases, there's briefs, there's litigation. It's romantic. <laughs> she was always a little lukewarm about all I felt. I didn't want to get involved. What are you doing with the stove? This is a stove? It's <laughs> a stove. You think you're up in central heating? I I've been mailing letters in it. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Must be those pickets outside. Be careful, Marion. I thought there was only a few. Oh my gosh, Walt, it's a regular demonstration. They've got a cloth dummy that looks like you and they're burning it. <laughs> Maybe they think I'm a football coach. This is no lobby man. They got big bug ugly signs with our names on them. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never harm me. Well, so they have sticks and stones. Come away from the window, Marion. Who was that? You're shooting and throwing rocks through the window. Mrs. Killer got hit out of a brick. She's lying on the hall floor muttering something about aviation. Don't panic. Everybody remain calm. <laughs> Don't keep that. You can panic. It's a riot. McGee, McGee, McGee! We have to use a riot! Come quickly! What are we gonna do? Try not to get shot! Maybe if you went out and dressed them! I said, let's go to Atlantic Beach! <laughs> We're gonna swim! Play pinnacle! Is everybody alright? Yes, are you? What's this? Be careful, that's a time bomb! A bomb? <laughs> it's so hot with the slightest half your bullets lay sky high! Ah, uh, they're running away! Okay, everybody out of the room! Walter? Keep calm. Yeah, I am calm, but the, the, who's Walter? <laughs> I've had experience with these things. I can just dismantle it before it goes off. Dismantle? Dismantle? Axel, be careful! Oh, my leg is just... Wait a minute! What those scratch it! Yeah, yeah row everybody! What about you? Oh, you'll see me flying over the roof any minute now. <laughs> Let's go, Susan. There's no point now of us getting torn limb from limb. Thanks, Marion. <sighs> there, it's dead. I did it. Oh, my heart sounds like a discotheque. Who told you to go picking up strange objects? That's how I met you. <laughs> <laughs> We're all right. What about everyone else? Miss Kara got in the head of the brick. She 
must have a concussion. She thinks she's Wright Brothers. Wright Brothers? Logic and play at the ministry and report this to Washington. Tell them I try to reach my father, but he's on a yacht somewhere in the Day of Caribbean. Come quickly, Wilbur. I'm coming, Orville. I'm telling you, Wilbur. We can do it. Do what? Get those machines to fly. Orville, you're crazy, but so are you. Let's go down to Kita Fred and put the air. We'll do it, both of us. What's the work, Orville? Wilbur, we must try and stop this arguing. Orville, you always were mother's favorite. <laughs> Miss Burns, take Miss Kilroy to her room and call the doctor. We may need to check her into a hospital. You better get a twin bed. You may be next. In the absence of my superiors, I have no choice but to give myself battlefield commission. From this point on, I am in charge of this embassy. How exciting! Now, if I could just think of what to do, that would help. I can. What? Axel, supposing my parents and I escape. By escape, you mean what? By escape, I mean to leave here and show up in Newark. Susan, you're nuts. Axel, I've already spoken to Father Drobny about it, and he says we can do it. Father Drobny, the holy Udini. What does he know? He can't even get himself out of a straitjacket. He knows how to get us out of the country, and he says it's a cinch. Axel, there's no other way. Susan, why don't you get some rest, if you still feel the same way next year? Why not? Give me one good reason. Death! That's one good reason. If you think your father's uncomfortable here, wait till you see him in front of a firing squad. My parents are willing. We've already discussed it. Well, since you've discussed it, they should be locked up. And since they're locked up, we have nothing to talk about. Axel, I'm serious. Susan, are you kidding me? I don't like these things. You know what? I like a nice, quiet evening at home. Axel, we can do it. The two of us, together. Susan, be realistic. How could we even get out of the building? Well, we could dig a tunnel. Dig a tunnel? Are you kidding? With our knowledge of engineering, we'd probably come up in the stove. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We could sneak out on the back of a laundry truck. I saw that in an old prison movie once. You don't send out our laundry anymore. Your mother does it for the whole embassy. <laughs> no. We only have a chance if, say, you're at a party, dressed as guests, mingled with the crowd, and went right out with the rest of them. Axel, that's brilliant. <clears throat> what is it? Your idea. There's a party here Saturday night for the Sultan. We'll dress as guests, mingle, and walk right out. That's the craziest thing I've ever heard. Axel, it's a stroke of genius. What's so urgent? What's the failure you want to tell us now? Go ahead, Axel. Mm -hmm. Axel? Uh, that was an awfully nasty bomb that came through the window before. Did you notice that? <laughs> In view of our current circumstances, after a careful consideration, I feel our situation calls for a little uh, action. What kind of action? Mr. Hollander, supposing you actually were trapped spies, what would you do? I'd deny it and claim to be a caterer. <laughs> you read the papers. What do families do when they're trapped behind the Berlin Wall? And they want freedom desperately. So desperately, their very lives depend on it. What do they do? They escape. They go over walls or through tunnels. They forge passports and go through roadblocks. It's been nice chatting with you, McGee. And if you have any other hysterical notions, be sure and call me. Mr. Hunt, it's the only way. Escape, what an interesting idea. McGee, you're crazy. Do you know that you're crazy? Because honestly, I think these years of insanity have made you crazy. Why not, Dad? It's better than being trapped here. Grouch, will you listen for a minute? A foggy day in London town. And Mr. Hunt, this is a matter of life or death. Listen, you picked the wrong guy to talk to about an escape. I don't escape from places that's not my field. I enter. And I say, it's wrong to reject an idea just because it sounds radical. That's exactly it. It's radical. And when it comes to things like going over walls or forging passports, I am a terrific conservative. I am the John Birch of the escape world. Calm down, will you please? Marion, when was the last time you saw a man with a hernia run from a tank? Daddy, you read about it every day. Couples escape, husband escape, lovers flee tyranny. Darling, what you read was... Couple shot escaping, husband shot escaping, and love is killed for the appearing. You're a coward! That's right, Miss Anthony. If you weren't here, you should have married Sergeant York. Do you want your daughter to grow up here for the rest of her life? I'd rather she grow up here than grow up as an orphan. I'm funny that way. I can tolerate anybody's orphan except for my own. You want your daughter to meet other eligible men, don't you? Yeah, that's true enough. <laughs> All right, let me hear it. I haven't had a good laugh in a long time. The night after tomorrow, there's going to be a reception. Who's catering? Well, you'll let him finish. <laughs> a big party in the honor of the Sultan of Bashir. That night, this house will be filled with dignitaries, men and women from all nations. You two and Susan will dress as guests 
and wait room until midnight. Now then, when the time comes, you walk downstairs, grab your jackets, and go right out. It'll give you a chance for your dark blue mohair. I don't like my dark blue mohair. It itches. How can mohair itches a soft fabric? So me. It itches. Well, you're going to have to wear your suit because I'm not going to escape if you're not going to dress. We're not going any place. Once outside, we'll have the embassy limousine waiting, and you're off. And even if we did manage to escape, what then? Well, well the rest is simple. My contacts with you two, you're, you're on your way home within hours. Mr. Hollander, I appeal to you. For the safety of everyone concerned, we must not procrastinate. Timing is crucial. We'll see Seth again, and I miss him so. By the way, Walter, I didn't want to say anything because I knew he'd get upset, but I got a letter from my brother. Our apartment was wrong. What? They stole the portable TV and all your shirts. <laughs> that curse! I'm a curse, Kayra. I'm stuck here somewhere. There's burgers running around with my initials on their cuffs. Dad, let's go home. Mr. Hollander, I beg you. McGee's plan is a good one. You can trust him. I know he seems like a bit of a bungler, but he's actually bright and resourceful. He knows exactly what he's doing, and I would say you're in good hands. All right, we'll escape. Very good, Mr. Hollander. You have nothing to worry about. I'm in complete control. The next few days were fraught with danger and intrigue. I enlisted the help of some of the most brilliant men in the underground to help with our plan, but unfortunately, they had all been captured. McGee worked around the clock devising an escape so complicated that only three people in the world could understand it. Yeah, McGee was not one of them. <laughs> On the morning of the day of escape, they reviewed the plan to make sure it was foolproof. It's a rotten plan. We should call it off. We're not calling anything off. All right, let's start from the top and go over the whole thing. Okay, Mr. Hollander, who are you? I'm John Randall from Washington, D.C. I work in the Department of the Interior. I'm married. I have four kids. I was born in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, went to school in California, majored in agriculture, first at the government under Roosevelt, and I drive a Chrysler Imperial. Who's going to ask me those questions anyway? In the event that you're stopped at any point, your answers must be consistent. And nobody's going to believe I'm Sam Randall. John Randall. John Sam. I got a headache. Okay, what are you doing in Europe? What am I doing in Europe? I'm making a tour for underdeveloped nations, coping with the problems of soil conservations and erosions. Very good. Don't very good me. And I'm his lovely wife, Carmen, former Miss Wisconsin of 1938. If they believe that, we win the whole Cold War. Wanna look at those varicose veins and they'll think I'm smuggling roadmaps. <laughs> Where are you staying in town? At the Great Hotel for one week, and we're flying to Malaysia. And what do you do when you leave here? At about midnight, as the guests are leaving, we casually say, excuse me, and leave with the largest group. Our driver takes us directly to the lobby of the Grand Hotel. Provided we haven't been stopped at the gate, identified, arrested, shot, beaten, or tortured. At the Grand Hotel, we switch cars. A man will come up to me and say, my, those are extremely lovely earrings. My wife has a pair just like them. He will be our driver, we go with him. What happens if some stranger happens to like your earrings? When the phone into Lapland? Okay. What do you do when you get to the train station? We get to the train station and a guy comes up to me. Presumably not suspicious looking. But he says, the grass is green. Which for my money, he may as well be wearing a neon sign saying, I'm a spy. <laughs> and what do you do? We get on the train with him heading for Istanbul. Another first in my life. I need Istanbul like the plague with my fear of the Turks. But you don't make it to Istanbul. Halfway there, we jump off the train. Oh, I'm really looking forward to that part. Your contact will assist you in all these maneuvers. What are you so worried about? We'll wait and see how well you jump. You practically break a leg finding a seat in the movie theaters. After leaving the train, we're met by a man driving a wagon load of hay. Correct. We dress up as peasants, get on the wagon, and go with him. <clears throat> Has to be A, right? I had the worst hate fever in America. Must be A. He takes us to the seashore where we'll board a submarine. <clears throat> Isn't it thrilling, Walter? A submarine? Yesterday you said it was a play. It had to be changed. Security precautions. Thanks for telling me. I would have spent all day looking for wings. Now then, here's some local currency. 
Yeah, that's all right. I, I got money. You get the next one. Take it, Walty. You only have traveler's checks. They're good anywhere. You're telling me you're going to stop in a chase through an alley to start signing traveler's checks? Who said anything about chase through alleys? You said this was going to be simple. I can't run. I'm an old man with orthopedic shoes. I suggest you take this money. Incidentally, have you ever shot a pistol? Shot a pistol? How often in the catering business do you think there's a gunfight? <laughs> oh, it's very simple. You just take off the safety, point, and squeeze the trigger. It is a beauty. I do not want you to carry a gun. Why not? They're dangerous. Yeah, they're not dangerous. You don't know how to use one. Don't tell me I don't know. I can use a gun. When have you ever used a gun? Plenty of times. Don't worry. When? I want to carry a gun. I don't want you to carry a gun. I want to carry a gun. Why can't I have a gun? What's wrong? Why can't I carry a gun? I'm not going to escape if you carry a gun. Maybe she has a point, Mr. Hollander. There won't be any need for it. I'm being overcautious. You have to take the fun out of everything we do. All right, you can carry a gun, but keep it unloaded. Thank you. You'd always have the time to load it. But besides, you won't need it. I've got every angle figured. You can never tell when this little piece of tin can spell the difference. I guess this is it. Eh, it'll be a cinch. You got very confident all of a sudden. I think everybody makes a big deal out of nothing. You think so? Yeah, the whole thing will be over in two hours. Won't be a big deal in your sister's wedding. You think so? Are you crying? I'm sorry. Can't you go any place without crying? Every time we go places, you always have to get upset. That's why I never want to go any place with you. That's why I was not very keen on the whole escape idea, because I knew you'd make it a federal case. What's the matter? I don't know! What do you mean you don't know? How can you not know? What you crying about? Does something hurt you? I'm afraid! <laughs> You're not such a big shot anymore. You talk a good game, but come on. Stop crying. Everything's going to be all right. What's the worst that could happen? We get caught? Yeah, big deal. They try us and torture us. So what? We bite down on those cyanide capsules. <laughs> what is the matter with you? Won't you leave everything to me? Will you do that? Will you trust me? You think I'd let anything happen to you? You remember when we were first married, there was that soldier at uh, Palisades Amusement Park? And yeah, you know, he whistled at you, and you know what I did? I gave him a sock in the jaw. Yeah, he was a tiny little thing. Yeah, and you were so beautiful in your puce, Aztec shawl. And you in your blue suit, your white socks, and your saddle shoes. That was doctor's orders. I had a foot infection. <laughs> well, Walt, will you protect me? Of course. Have I ever let you down? Ever? Have a little faith in me. I'll see that we come right side up. Walt, I've been such a terrible wife. Not at all. You'd be surprised, but... A lot of women would find it unpleasant to live with me. No. <laughs> sure. Now, you should go upstairs and rest for a while, and then start getting ready. I'm going to wear my new dress. Yeah, you better bring a pair of sneakers. Wally! Hey, you haven't called me that since the Harvest Moon Ball, and even then I said if you did, I'd break your neck. Yeah, yeah, I'm going, I'm going. Mm. All right, I'll just be down here reading my paper. And don't worry, you deal with a guy who would handle himself. Why don't you come inside? Have you enjoyed being the guest of honor? Ah, Mr. McGee, there's nothing better than cement wounded pride, quite like vodka. Ah, well, there's plenty of vodka inside. Whatever happened to the American from New Jersey, the Mongol? Ah, he couldn't make it, but he sends his apologies and best wishes. I'm glad you consented to let us honor you with this party. You know how my father feels about you. Where is your father? His plane is delayed. He'll probably arrive once everyone has left. Take a card. Not now, Father. <laughs> Go on. Take one. I'm not in the mood for magic. So, Gee, there's a message written on the two of spades. You can tell me the message, Father. No one will hear. Great. The Hollanders are ready. <laughs> Axel? Uh, are your parents ready to go? They're coming. My father's having trouble getting his holster on. How is this crawling in trouble? 
Crowjack is here. If I tried to keep anyone away, it would look suspicious. You better go now. The coast is clear. Goodbye, Axel. I'll speak to you in a few days. We have some future plans to discuss. <laughs> Washington, D.C. I work in the Department of the Interior. I'm married. I have four kids. I'm going to go out to the Scouts of the School of California, majored in agriculture, plus that the government under Roosevelt is trying to price the material. Yeah, I'm John Randall. And I'm his lovely wife, Carmen. How do you do? Yanis Kaznar, and this is the Countess of Hino Bardoni. Charm. Say hello, darling. Hello, darling. <laughs> <laughs> this one's extraordinary. Have you tasted any? The bouquet is solely demure yet uh, playfully articulate. Squire magazine. How long have you been here? Uh, a just few a weeks, few days. Just a few, few weeks. So uh, the grand hotel. It's I don't quite really care lovely. Much, well, it's but... late. We really must be going. Come, Walter. Walter. How amusing! My wife does not know that my name is Sam Randall. Sam. John Randall. Oh, John. Sam. Walter. Well, okay. Listen. My real name is Randall John Sam, but the people in Washington kept confusing me with uh, Lyndon Johnson. You know, John Sam, Johnson. Yeah, I kept getting all those meat bills, phone messages. How interesting. Yeah, anyway, we're doing Afghanistan. Tanisha! So, uh, Tanisha Afghanistan. Come on, Marion. I'm his lovely wife, Carmen. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, allow me. Uh, 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 Cigarette lighter. <laughs> May I have a light? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> the damn zippos never work. <laughs> no matter. Party's almost over. I hate to be the last to leave. Lucky those zippos don't work. Come on, Marion. So, my friends. We meet again. What you do? Roll a drunk and steal his invitation? You're all dressed up. Going any place? Yeah, then you get the memo, it's your funeral. <laughs> Crowjack, telephone call for you. Urgent. Hey, I'll, I'll just take it in my room. Hurry. They're holding. I'll do it, you later! Where are they? They've gone. One surpassed the police at the gate. The rest is not hard. If we don't hear from them in the next three minutes, we can assume they've made it. Now they're going down the front steps. Now they're coming to the car, slowly, deliberately. They're going through all together. By now they've reached the gate. The guards have no reason to stop them. Get back here, you lady! My two young Gee, wonder what's happening in the other embassies. What is that? Oh, Axel, it's terrible! What the hell could you? It was dark. I couldn't see anything. What the hell is going on? How could you do it? 
How could you attempt an escape? Dad, this situation calls for action. If it had worked, we'd all be heroes. But it failed. That's everything you do fails. Picking in riots, bombs? This has never happened in my embassy before. And this morning, a devout priest produces seven of space from my ear. Dad, Father Drama, you're just trying to cheer you up. I'll get you for this, Axel. I'll find a way. I promise. Excuse me? I'm finished with him, Miss Hollander. By the way, your mother called. She wants you to mail her your birth certificate. Oh, God. Through two world wars without a scratch, only to be shot by a caterer. <laughs> <laughs> Axel, I'm sorry. It's all our fault. No, it's not. By now, I'm sure they've doubled the guard outside. Well, we gave it our best try, but unfortunately, I shot the boss. Those are the brakes. Guess we're here for good now. I got you into this, and I promise I'll get you out. Well, I'm ready and willing to try anything. I feel like our first attempt has really toughened me up now that I've drawn blood. <laughs> sure, it was your father's. Uh... What was that? It's the Sultan Bashir and his wife, and are they unconscious? Ooh. He serves them right. They drink of alcohol last night to rub down the Green Bay Packers. I bet. <laughs> Call Bonnie Silverman. He's probably still at Montauk Point with the station wagon waiting for us to surface. Miss Burns! It looks as if the Sultan and his wife found a little too much party. Take them to their room. If you have trouble moving them, there's a dolly downstairs. Get them some pajamas. <gasps> pajamas! Pajamas! McGee, why are you looking at me like that repeating the word pajamas? <laughs> it just might work. Axel, what are you thinking? Our father dropped me! Come quickly! Hey, McGee, if you, there's anything going through your head other than the usual cow stampede, you want to tell us? Size is about right. Axel, I know what you're thinking, but there's two of them and three of us. No one saw the Sultan and his wife leave last night, so if they were leave this morning, it only looked natural. But under those royal robes, it will not be his majesty at all. But the phantom caterer! It sounds great. Won't work, but it sounds great. <laughs> it's just crazy enough to work! You two get changed, quickly. What about me? I'll get to you. Miss Burns, please assist them. Axel, are you sure you're, you know what you're doing? Susan, for the first time since this whole thing started, I feel as if I'm in complete control. This is going to work. You call? Ah, uh, yes. Are your contacts still ready to go at a moment's notice? Why, yes, I'm sure. Then alert them immediately. Axel, this is so thrilling. You're actually having an idea. <laughs> <laughs> Every once in a while, fate comes along, takes a man by the hand, enables him to build a mountain. Oh, Axel, how corny! I'm gonna get you all home safely, right now. The storm we were expecting. <laughs> we'll be a little late. However, I think the same precautions are in order. Susan, have I told you lately that I love you? No, but if you want to, I think we can work something out. Ready to go? Yeah, his so itches. How can it itch itself? <laughs> I've explained a thousand times about my skin. My dermatologist says I've the eyes of a princess. Everything is ready. Go immediately, and may God bless you. Try to be as casual and as confident as you can. And if anyone asks you, just mutter something about Allah. <laughs> the driver will take you to the Grand Hotel. From there on, our plan is precisely the same. What about Susan? Susan's gonna walk out here in a little while under the protection of full diplomatic immunity. How? As the wife of a foreign diplomat, you get that from What? <laughs> you and her? Why not? We're United States citizens in United States territory. We're over 21 and Father Drop is a priest. It's perfect. Oh, wow. <laughs> want to marry you? I do! I, I do! You do! Well, may Allah twist your nose off! <laughs> You've got to act fast. While we're on the submarine, you wire us a silverware pack. May all the sands of the desert fill you, Nathal. Hurry, please. Uh, on the way home, I'll stop at the drugstore and get you a bottle of those pills. Come on, Mary. I gotta register his name under the unemployment insurance office. Mr. Hollander, remember, sir, you're not losing a daughter, you're gaining a son. May all the camels in Egypt forget it! <laughs> Incidentally, the Hollanders did make a slave in the I married Susan McGee. And Ambassador McGee, well, he's still running for governor, but without the Sultan's help. 
And just to be sure no one causes any trouble, he sent McGee 5,000 miles away to Bolivia, where for the first time in 200 years, that country had a plague of locusts. <laughs> Pick a card. Go ahead. Pick a card. She directed this amazing play, so we'd just like to thank her very much. And also a huge thank you to Darlene Sherwood, our drama teacher. The best part of my job is this. Uh, watching the lights come on, watching them uh, develop, watching them uh, grow as actors, and getting into the theater, learning the protocol, appreciating, uh, telling the truth on stage, and, and especially, particularly, when I can pass off uh, a directing job to uh, an amazing student who wanted to take on this huge responsibility and, uh, and it, it's sometimes hard to let go, but she, uh, she took the reins and she did an amazing job, really great. And thanks in major part to this, uh, to this cast who took their roles, eventually took their roles very seriously. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, oh, it's, it's just a treat to be able to work with, uh, with students in this school and in this play, and I so look forward to uh, the future of working with some of these. We've got over half the cast in grade nine. I am just so, I'm so happy to be back. your students. Thank you for the hours uh, that I know you have spent encouraging, driving, uh, avoiding, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and keep on doing that because uh, this is the result of all the hard work and, uh, and I truly appreciate you guys out there. Thank you.